Hey everybody, welcome to the video. In Latin, there are two ways to show possession, and one of them uses the dative. That's what we're talking about today, the dative of possession. This is from the Vulgate course, number 104 by William Dodds, available free on Google Books. Let's jump in. Okay, we have this very simple sentence here, Marcus has a sister. Subject of the sentence is Marcus. He's in the nominative case. He has, has is the verb, what does he have? He has a sister. Sister is a direct object and goes into the accusative case, at least usually, uh, is an article adjective. I'm gonna leave that sentence analyzed up there. We'll diagram it quickly, but then eliminate the diagram. Marcus has, and then the direct object goes on the main line after a half, half stick. Marcus has sister, he has a sister, right? Okay, very simple, simple as that. So let's get rid of all that, and let's translate this two ways. First, let's translate this as if uh, we're going to, well, let's translate it with an accusative. Let's do it that way. Okay, this is not dative of possession. So we have Marcus, translation of Marcus is Marcus. Marcus habet, right? Marcus has, and what does he have? Marcus habet Soror M. Sororum. Marcus habet sororum. Of course, better Latin would be Marcus sororum habit. But Marcus habet sororum. Okay? So that's correct. You can translate it this way. It'd be best to move habit to the end of the sentence. But we can, ha we can translate this sentence this way. But there is another way to do it. The other way to do it is to leave sister in the nominative case and put Marcus into the dative case and then use a form of the verb sum. Okay, so here we go. Let's do it this way. Marco, okay, we now have Marcus in the dative case. Marco est soror. And we have sister in the nominative case. This looks like, on first glance, this looks like Marcus is a sister. But that is not what's happening here. This sentence basically says, To Marcus, there is a sister. A sister belongs to Marcus. A sister goes with Marcus. A sister is to Marcus. This is the dative of possession. Very common. The Romans loved to use this. All right, let's look at another sentence using dative of possession. Julia has five brothers. Subject of the sentence, Julia. Subject of the sentence, nominative case. Verb, she has. What does she have? She has brothers. Direct object, accusative case. How many brothers? Adjective, five. Okay, Julia... The translation of Julia is Julia. <laughs> Julia habet. Let's go with the accusative one first, right? Julia habet quinque. Julia habet quinque fratres. All right, this is accusative, but since it's plural, it's going to look the same in the nominative. Julia habet quinque fratres. Okay, so that's the regular way. That's what you're used to. Now let's use dative of possession. In date with dative of possession, Julia, my bad, mea culpa, is going into the dative case. So Julie, all right, there she is. She's in the dative case. A e Julie est quinque fratres. Again, this looks like, at first glance, Julia is five brothers, but that's incorrect. Fratres is nominative. The nominative and the accusative of both of these look exactly the same, so just trust me on this one. Fratres is nominative. Five brothers, it says, five brothers are to Julia. Five brothers are to Julia. Julia, or to Julia belong five brothers, or Julia has five brothers. All right, we have no more but five loaves. This one's from, this one's from the New Testament, okay? Subject of the sentence, we, subject pronoun, nominative case, we what, we have, verb, what do we have? We have five 
loaves. That's direct object, accused of case. How many loaves? Five. And uh, But here is a conjunction, and no more is an adverb. It's uh, telling us how many we have. We have no more but five loaves. Let's go directly to the dative of possession on this one, okay? Non sunt, non sunt nobis, non sunt nobis plus quam quinque panes. Non sunt nobis plus quinque plus quam quinque panes, and it looks like uh, they are not us more than five, oops, more than five loaves or more than five breads. And but really, what this means right here, you have a form of sum plus a dative object. This means there are not to us more than five loaves, or we do not have, another way of translating this, we do not have more than five loaves. If we wanted to use the accusative, we would say non habemos, non habemos plus con quinque panes, we do not have more than five loaves. But since we're using dative of possession, we'll stick with non sunt nobis plus quam quinque panes. All right. What is your name? Another way of saying this is what name do you have, right? What name is attached to you? Okay. Uh, name, subject of the sentence. Oops, not sub. Well, I'll leave that alone. Subject noun, nominative case. Whose name? Your name. Verb is. Your name is what? All right. It's basically like saying what name do you have? But we're going to use the dative of possession, and we're going to say quad tibi. Oops, I wrote that backwards. Quad tibi nomen est. And this literally means what to you is name what to you is name or what to you is the name or what is the name given to you what is the name given to you what is your name that's state of a possession my name is Dwayne so I would say name subject to the sentence nominative case whose name my name my name is it's a linking verb because it's linking name plus my name which is Dwayne and uh, Duane is a predicate nominative. So, in Latin, I would say nomen mihi. There's the um, there's the dative. The name to me is Duane. The name to me is Duane. Or the name that I have is Dwayne. All right, but since we are using the dative of possession, oops, I messed up here, guys. It should be est. There we go. Uh, we've got the dative of possession. We're using some form of sum instead of uh, some form of habere. We're using some form of sum combined with the dative. Alright, I hope that's clear to you. If not, you're welcome to comment below and ask for some help, and I will answer your question as best I can. Have a great day, guys.